Welcome back to PCG Media's Weekly Roundup with me, Rachel Reynolds. In this week's Roundup, World of Warcraft offers a level boost for a price, Square Enix stay interest in Final Fantasy PC games, we look at the latest Titanfall trailer, we talk about how warring consoles and developers actually need each other to survive, and whether AAA gaming is becoming irrelevant, and Ken Levine announces that Irrational Games is winding down. World of Warcraft players will be able to boost their characters all the way to level 90, if they're willing to invest $60 on it at least. The option was added in preparation for the latest expansion, Warlords of Draenor, however those who buy the expansion will get one free boost with that. The move was applied in the MMO's latest patch and will no doubt add fuel to the fire of the pay-to-win debate currently surrounding many video games. Square Enix has stated they hope to bring future Final Fantasy games to the PC. Until now, the company has felt the PC was not an ideal platform for their single-player games, although they have released several MMOs. There are lots of regions and countries where PC is very strong, said Final Fantasy producer Yoshinori Kates. So in terms of our hopes to be able to deliver our games to every single country in the world and to as many gamers as possible, yes, we would definitely be interested in pursuing that route in the future. Final Fantasy VII and VIII have already been re-released for PC, with Square Enix noting that they have been proving quite popular, but that any work on PC releases is at an early stage. Respawn released a new Titanfall trailer this week, and it certainly got a lot of people guessing. The trailer, as well as a newly released art book, seemed to show strange creatures, some looking similar to dinosaurs, in the backgrounds of many images. However, the game's developers have stated that the players will not have the opportunity to fight these monsters, nor will they affect gameplay. Whether the monsters were always intended to be purely decorative, or may have been planned to be part of gameplay is uncertain. If you want to see the creatures for yourself, PCG Media has the trailer on its website. Continuing on to our other big discussion of the week, we ask if AAA games have had their day. AAA games used to be of obviously higher quality than the indie offerings, but it's getting increasingly easy to argue that the quality gap between the two is closing. Indie used to mean either the hobby of a single developer or a tiny team, whereas AAA games would indicate large teams able to make much bigger games. However, as big name studios rush out broken and unfinished products, it becomes a lot harder to call them signs of quality. While there are big name successes, the fact that small projects like Gone Home and Dear Esther are gaining as much praise and attention, often for trying something new even if it doesn't necessarily succeed, indicates that gamers want more than just a recognisable label on the game's box. So what can we take from this? Mostly that throwing money at a problem isn't the answer, considering how many studios are struggling to cover the costs of development alone. It's becoming increasingly common for projects to change hands mid-development because the original studio went bankrupt. The rise of technology and social media means you don't have to be a big company anymore to make a product and distribute it to the masses. For the full editorials on these topics or to join in the discussion, check out the PCG Media website or let us know what you think in the comments below. Mere days after we posted our original discussion on AAA Gaming's place in the industry, Ken Levine announced he is winding down Irrational Games. The studio, probably best known for the Bioshock trilogy, has been pretty successful, so it seems like money isn't the reason behind the sudden and rather surprising move. I need to refocus my energy on a smaller team with a flatter structure and a more direct relationship with gamers, said Levine, who founded the company in 1997. Levine claims he wants to return to how we started, a small team making games for the core gaming audience. Possibly good news for gamers, almost definitely less than good news for the employees of Irrational Games, considering all but 15 now face redundancy. Levine's new team will be working under Take-Two, publishers of the original Bioshock. That's your lot for this week's roundout, but if you're looking for another PCG media fix, we've got another Insurgency Playcast, our Titanfall preview, and our review of the Castle Doctrine all on our website. See you next week.